What's tea, y'all? I know some of you are out there right now having a hard time, having problems in your relationships, having trouble with life, or maybe you're on social media swiping and swiping, thinking, why can't that be me? Why can't I do that? Well, I'm here to let you know that you can. This is Create Your Own Story with Terrell Garnett, where we not only help you create your own story, but we let you tell yours too. Let's get into it, y'all. Perfect. So guys, I'm here today with another guest as always. And I'm actually really excited for this one. Um, uh, back in January, when I first started the podcast, I named a couple people when I did a podcast that my dream guests were. And this um, person happened to be one of them. So I spoke it into fruition, um, the power of the tongue, y'all. Um, so I'm going to let him introduce himself. And yeah, let's get this ball rolling. I am from Mars. Okay, my name is Simone. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Well, this is artist Samo. Um, I personally, um, when I did that podcast back in January, I stated on there, and I say it throughout a lot of my podcasts too, that I feel, not that I feel, but I know that if it wasn't for you, um, that I pro not that I probably wouldn't have made it because and I was not going off myself or anything like that. But your music has greatly um, helped me in a time in my life where I needed it. Um, mm. I found you in June of 2019, and I was having a really tough time, just with life and just emotions. You know, people hold things in, and certain relationships that I had, I. Uh, wasn't putting myself first and I remember seeing a video on Facebook and I never really go on Facebook of you singing um the song move moving on I believe move on and I didn't think that you were actually the artist that was singing the song I thought you were just the guy that was just singing the song you know you had like a wave cap on or a durag and I was like oh the song's actually good though let me go look so I hit up uh iTunes Apple Music and I'm like, wait a minute that's the same dude you know so I was like okay let me listen to more stuff and then maybe a couple weeks later I um, was really going through something and I had put you on and then I heard the song Apology and I listened to your music and I always just skipped over that song and then I listened to it on the ride I was going to go see uh, Georgia Rain and Rodney um, in concert and um, how the song just changes like from you being upset to you just be basically talking to God and it just really uh when I tell you I listened to that song so many times um, that it was basically like a prayer that I was praying in a sense. Mm. And I didn't realize at that time that that prayer was actually answered in 2020 until um, October when I was talking to my friend and I had brought you music up, um, an old high school friend. And I was saying like, oh, wait a minute. Like, I guess I was a praying and I didn't even realize that I was praying that prayer because all of the friends that I gained in 2020 happened to come via church or via something with God and I'm like wow mm -hmm. like it, it kind of just opened my eyes I'm like dang like I, I got that prayer answered not even realize I was praying it mm. not to be deep I know we just started this so <laughs> right, just jumped into it. <laughs> that's why we have to be careful of what we are saying you yes, know? definitely. And because um, a lot of times we're praying and we don't even know it. Yeah, exactly. I totally believe that. And um, I I'm going to ask you how you would describe your music and then I'm going to describe it too. So how would you describe your music? I would describe my music as um, a new discovered planet that people on Earth are trying to figure out. Is this a planet? Is this a rock? Is it a, a you know... Like, what is it? Is there life on it? I see, like, you know, water substance, but is there anything growing? Um, my fans know that um, I'm a new planet, but the rest of the world doesn't know yet. I feel that. I feel that. Um, I like to tell people when they, they ask me, and I'm like, it's like, people have, like, gospel music because, you know, they, they are with God and everything, but I feel like yours is, like, the gap between like 
circular music and gospel music. Like, if you ain't saved and you want to feel something that's going to make you feel better, but you don't want to listen to gospel music because you don't believe in God or whatever the case is, mm. then you're the artist to listen to. That's, it's crazy to hear that from you. This is our first time meeting. Yes. Because I've heard that so much. And I'm like, yo, uh, that was not my plan to be like, <laughs> The, the in-between, from church people, they call it Luke Moon. Yeah. But, um, that wasn't, like, I didn't go into this like, oh, you know what, I'm going to do R&B and pop and rock, but it's going to be like a gospel feel to it. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be me. I didn't do that. I was just making music. That's awesome. So the first question that I do want to ask you, though, is with everything that happened in 2020 with the presidency the the George Floyd murder um, and COVID, how has 2020 shaped and formed you to the person you are today? 2020 enhanced my human side as far as me being more intentional with my family and my friends. I said in the interview before that I forgot about um, somebody bring it to my memory that I'm a way better friend, brother, son, uncle than I am a singer. I'm way better at those things than I am at being an artist. I take more pride in that than anything. That's amazing. So it just it's, it's just enhanced me to be more intentional with um, family and friends. That's, crazy. That's amazing. I know 2020 was a uh... I think it was probably my best year. I wow. Think, yeah. Like, despite not, you know, like everything that happened, I think that it was my my best year. Um, it, it's funny because I always say that, like, you, your music helped me get out of a struggle. And then Kiara, like, soon put out her album. And it was, like, the direction I was going to. Um, um, so between you, Kiara, and the Walls group, I... Uh, it really just helped my life. And I felt like I didn't have no stress. I didn't have no nothing. Like everybody's worrying about the pandemic and everything that's going on. And I was chilling. I'm like, I'm sorry. I still did everything that I was doing before the pandemic I was doing during the pandemic. So I really didn't, you know, and then I like, I love people, but I really don't like people. So <laughs> I, I didn't really like, I didn't have to have an excuse to not go hang out with certain people because they didn't want to hang out anyways because of the pandemic. So it was a, a win-win situation for me. Mm. But um, before we continue, I do want to play one of your songs. Um, I'm going to release this. Um, so I made, I prepared, I made a playlist. Um, it's going to be on Spotify and on Apple Music. It's called Terrell Garnett okay. Presents Samo, Fuck the Devil Uh-oh. and His Energy. And it's like 20, <laughs> 20, 20 of your songs that I like. So, I mean, they can run this up. Um, but I'm going to play a song right now. Um, and yeah, we can have some more dialogue. And this is off of your last project. This is Us at Night. So good when we be on the phone Love it when it's you and me and us alone You kinda nasty, you be alone me I'm kinda nasty, that's why you like me Go ahead and love me, you wanna touch me I be screaming on the inside when you're with me You'll be my job, it's a fucking look, So that 
was us at night by Samo. I know you guys love that record. Um, so just with uh, more more dialogue and get into this conversation, um, what do you think out of all of the songs that you've recorded, what has been the most uh, meaningful one to you? Mm. That's a hard question. It's a good question, but it's a hard question. Because all of them are like a a piece of me, clearly. I think the one that means the most to me today will be moving on. Why is that? Um, It was hard for me to move on from almost anything before writing that song, even after writing that song, it took me a while to really grasp that message or that lesson because I didn't want to lose anything. And I found out that in order to gain more, sometimes you have to let certain things go. I, I and so, totally agree with that. You, know, you got to move on. But moving on is not easy, but it's necessary at times. Yeah, I feel like I have a, a hard time sometimes with that. And it's not even so much for me. Like, yeah, it's hard for me, but sometimes I'm like, I know that I do so much for certain people or I give so much that by me leaving their life, I feel mm-hmm. like I'm doing a disservice for them, even though by me being in their life, it's doing a disservice for me. And same place that I, I've been in before, and even sometimes now, and then I'm reminded that I'm not God. Yeah, yeah, yes. No pun intended, but pun intended. literally, <laughs> no, I'm not God. And these people were born when they were born. I was not at the hospital. Exactly. No, that's what I'm saying. That like your music, when in a time in my life where I I needed it, there were so many things that I needed to to let go, and it was hard because I never uh, focused on me. I always thought that that was a, a selfish thing. Uh, um and but i once i did that that's when 2020 came around the pandemic or whatever i was able to 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 just focus on me and i prosperous i started a podcast i did all these you know great and amazing things um but it was you know i i literally had to let some people go um and it it was a uh, hard but very very necessary so with, with with moving on, um, I know you have um, a lot of not similar songs, but songs that talk about that we're not moving on, and then there's like focus, and then there's um, let you go. Um, that's your moving on. Maybe your favorite song to uh, to that you've done. But what's your favorite song to perform live? My favorite record to perform live is Yellow Diamonds. Uh, that's actually the first song on the playlist that I have. More. Yeah. Um, I see. So the last concert I went to um, was your concert um, back in 20, 2020, January. Yeah, January. Yep. That was the last concert I went to. I remember I, um, right before I, I found you, um, or when I found you back in like June, I'm listening to it. And I was like, when's he going to be in concert? I actually want to see him in concert. And literally, I looked up tickets, and it was, like, Saturday, and the concert was Friday, and I had just missed it. And I'm like, are you serious? So I knew when you came back around, I was going to go there. So we're in the arena, and uh, right, literally right in front of me, sitting down, um, was Luke James and Ro James. And I'm like, oh, and I've met um, Luke before because we have a mutual friend. Um, So I was able to, like, say what's up to him. But I'm just like, you know, like... It just, I, I don't know, it was just a, an amazing experience. But I will say that I was really upset that you uh, didn't sing Don't Wait because I've seen so many videos of you singing that online. And I'm like, I was just waiting for it. And then you did let go. And I was like, oh, I'm not mad that he did this song. But I was just like, I was really waiting for that one. So when all this is open again, I'm going to need to go to another concert. Um, but speaking of concert, I know that you have a show coming up on... This coming up Thursday, Friday, the 29th? 29th. Yo, this is the biggest show that I've ever done in my life. Um, It's a full band, background singers, me, and we just, dancers, me, <laughs> and we just like 
having a really good time. A lot of work went into this. Um, I'm I'm like changing clothes like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Oh wow! I sung oh. for ten hours straight, putting this show together. How about took what me that like, do that to your voice? You know what? It took me like three days to really recover. A week fully, but um. You know, the adrenaline was in there and I was like, I gotta get this done. So I was really the assistant for everybody else. I was asking everybody, are they okay? Everybody good? Y'all want some drink? Y'all want some water? Mm-hmm. And people were constantly telling me to shut up and sit down and relax. <laughs> and I wasn't. Um, but yeah, April the 29th, this is a worldwide show with no cap. It's worldwide because this um, streaming platform allows you to connect with people, not just in the Americas, but in Europe, Africa, you know, um, Asia, it's just amazing. So all of my fans around the world that I can't really reach physically right now, I can reach them through no cap. That's awesome. And I like the name no cap because there's really no cap on the really possibilities. No cap. Yeah. So, so with, with, um, your show and everything, what, what do you think that you bring that's, that's different to the table? Like what, what makes you, you? What makes me myself is the the paying attention of detail that I put into my music. Like I don't just um, talk about uh, a moment and just, you know, fiddle over it. I break down the details in that moment. Like say if there's an argument and I'm like, you usually fuss at me, but tonight you're not arguing at all. And that's weird. And I'm sitting across here just staring at you, waiting for you to say something. Now I'm thinking, are you about to leave? Are you done with me? Because usually you are. Most people don't go that far into the moment. Yeah. Um, Also, I think that I'm a pretty fly guy. Um, Not that I'm comparing myself to anybody else, but I think for me, you know, I bring, you know, I bring the fashion game up just a little bit. You know, I don't want to be too arrogant on your show. Yeah. Um, I also think me singing R and B and sounding so gospel to people mm-hmm. is um intriguing. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing until people like yourself would tell me like, yeah, I didn't know if it was gospel or R and B at first, or like, oh, it's it's kind of like you in between. So. Yeah, I think that makes me miss other things, but we'll be here all day. Yeah, I, <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Um, yeah, I feel like there's, um, and in our generation there now, there's uh, a few vocalists that I think that are like top tier and they don't get the credit that they deserve. You being one, um, uh, Luke James, I think, is another one. Um, Avery Wilson, um, and and even Mario, Mario. I think that like he, I don't feel that he peaked, but I feel that other people think that he peaked. But we ain't gotta get all, <laughs> all into that on the podcast. Um, but um, there's certain vocalists out there like nowadays with the music industry, like people that are actually talented aren't necessarily winning on a commercial level. Um, do you happen to struggle with that at all? I no. Uh, I'm going to win regardless, and I will probably be. No, I will be the the guy that changes that or that brings um a balance to it. Because there's people who um, we all know that aren't vocal vocalists or mm-hmm. like top tier vocals. I still like their music. Yeah. I would do a record with them because of the energy that they bring. I think a lot of singers forget to bring energy and they just bring their voice. Yeah. But with me, I bring my energy as well. You know, your energy is power. So um, I'll I'll be the guy to change that. Yeah, and I think- be able to go mainstream and still keep my coof. I feel that. I think that with you, one thing that I noticed by watching you perform live is that like your personality, you know, like you can see it on stage as well as if you follow you on Instagram. 
like you you're probably one of the funniest people like i'll look at some of your videos or just your hashtags alone and <laughs> i'd be dying and i'm like just the one that you posted the other day about luke james's birthday or whatever i was like dying and i'm telling my friend and he's like not funny i was like uh oh, you just had to be there like i thought this shit was funny but that's just me i don't even think luke saw that at all yeah i probably have to screenshot it and send it to him for him to see it yeah that, that i thought it was hilarious um but with all that i um i noticed i can't Take away from the hat that you have on. I know people can't see this, um, but it says oh, yeah. black skin isn't a threat. With everything that's been, I mean, go- going on since the beginning of time, really, realistically speaking, now there's just more cameras that point an eye to it. How um, how was it growing up black for you? Hmm. I didn't know, but I knew I was black clearly, but I didn't know what it meant to be black until I was like, uh, started going to school. And I would see how the kids that were not black were treated nicer. And then it went from the kids who were black, but lighter skin were treated nicer, you know? But I really didn't pay a lot of attention to it because as kids, we just brush stuff off and we keep playing anyway. And we, we're just excited and we have a lot of energy. Um, my aunt, I have an aunt named Devora, who every time she would um, see me or she would give me a bath, she would say, mm, boy, look at this. You see this? And I'd be like, what? She like, look at your look at your skin. And so I would look at my skin. She's like, your skin is so pretty. It's so beautiful. How you get skin like that? It's so dark and beautiful. Oh my gosh. And her doing that at the time, now I know she did it because she knew the world that I was going to go out and live in eventually. So even though I did go out into this world and I, this world had me question was I good enough just because of the tone of my skin I had that to rely on but like, no my own boy told me that my my skin was was beautiful she liked my skin and so I decided and I chose to draw from that energy and not really listen to people even though I might have been treated differently because I'm a darker skinned brother and that's why I'm not a mad dark skinned person I've definitely been treated horribly because of it, but I just don't choose to live in it. Yeah. Because I, I know my worth. That's amazing. I think that um, just this year alone, like, I feel as a black person that I've had to uh, overlook a lot of things. Um, mm. I feel like as black people, we do, like, certain people do certain things, and you just, you're supposed to let it slide. You're supposed to, like, you know that you can't do that, but... You, you know, you just got to let it slide because, you know, then you, you, it's like you're pulling the race card. So, like, despite all the deaths that we've had over the years, but with the whole George Floyd thing specifically, like, it, I, I don't want to say it was a good thing. However, I think that it was um, needed because um, now the uncomfortable conversations that we probably wouldn't have had before we were having now um yeah. and i'm able to speak my mind i have certain friend groups where i'm the only black person and i feel like pretty much everybody does but where i'm the only black person and i'm just like i'm like i call things out now or like even just with tiktok like there's depending on what you like that's all you see so i have friends that are like oh these are funny i was like all i see is stuff about black people i'm like that's just what i like and they're like oh why don't you send that stuff to us and i'm like because you I don't know you guys. I just don't I don't want you to say something negative and I have to pop off. So, I'm saving you guys from from that. But like no, it's it's uh something, you know, it'll help us, you know, it'll teach us something and then I'm just like, well, it's not my responsibility to teach you how the world is. Like you need to go out and search that yourself, but I mean, yeah, I'll send you guys the TikToks if you want. Um but I feel like I've had people that I didn't realize, I'm not going to call them racist but they borderline, like one friend said that they didn't believe in racism. And I'm Ooh. like, and they weren't even white, they were Hispanic. Um, and I'm like, how, like, how do you know? Like, I, there's, 
I believe that you can say pretty much anything to anybody and uh, and you guys can agree to disagree. But when it comes to something as serious that, that's not something I can agree to disagree with you on. So, you know, that just the relationship's just going to have to be done there because I don't have the time or the energy to to basically tell you what I go through on a daily basis that you are being, that you probably go through too, but you don't even realize it. Yeah. Uh, I, um, the other night I was, um, I like to walk at night. Um, cause I like looking at the moon when I walk, but somebody had left their, um, the light on in their car. And I saw there was a car seat in the back and I was like, I should probably knock on that door and let them know that the light is on. But you know what? I thought about it. I said, hell no. Yeah. It's nighttime. I'm a black man. And I'm not like a, a I'm not, I don't, I don't look threatening, clearly. Yeah. Not jogging at night, but I might be look threatening to them. Mm-hmm. And I ain't got time to get shot or somebody call the police. I saw a guy trying to break into your house. And yeah. Especially if they ain't seen me and it's nighttime. I said, listen. They just got to get a jump in the morning time. Yeah, I need exactly. to be, my mom need to be able to call me in the morning. And I don't want that story um, on my life. Yeah, he was trying to help somebody out. They killed him. No, not me. And that happens so, so many times too, though. Like, the, mm-hmm. if we even call the cops just for help just recently with the uh, death of Michaela. Um, yeah. But it, it's just. Uh, I try to play devil's advocate and I try to think, okay, well, we see cops that are nicer to certain, you know, people that are white, but I'm like, it's not the same cops. So, you know, things can be different. I try to play devil's advocate. However, with so many things going on, I remember watching a Amanda Seals video recently and she was saying about, you know, there's good apples and bad apples, but if the good apples aren't doing anything in the inside of the police force and stuff then are they really good apples like um so it's one of those things that like if you're not really helping then you're you're kind of if you're not helping you're against it yeah but i'm gonna play another song right now before we get into another thing and um this one is called myspace and here we go If you don't inspire me, you gotta go I can't have you fucking with my flow If you are not feeling me, then hit the road It's cold with me, I've been here before favorite i didn't play the but my favorite line in that song is um i have people that have died on me that are still Mm. here on this earth and i can 
definitely relate to that. That is that line right there is so 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 deep. Um, what yes. what do you for the people that don't understand that? What does that mean to you? Um, I have people who died on me who are still alive on the earth. Like people that just dropped you or ghosted you or um, acted as though you were disposable. But then you can still get on social media and see them just living life like they've done nothing, like they uh, like you haven't invested, like the time you shared with them was like, oh mm, yeah, that type of pain is unmatched because it's like, wow, you really don't think anything of me, or you really just you saw no more need for me, and you just disposed of me like that. Wow. And for a lot of people, um, it, that when you feel that way, there's a choice. Either you're going to agree with them that you're not worth anything or you're going to tap into your higher self and not necessarily prove them wrong, but prove to yourself that you are worth something and what they, how they are treating you is a false truth. Yeah, that's, that's a deep. It just it took me back to, to somebody particular, one of this friend that I – that I had, I remember I was going through something and I've helped him through all of his stuff. And I remember him calling me, uh, January 7th. I remember the day, um, it was a few years back and he was like, I'm going to call you later. Cause I know you're going through something. You've always helped me out and I'm going to be there for you. That was the last day I talked to him. <laughs> I, what's his name? What's his name? His we're gonna, name me is... and my fans going to pull up on. <laughs> uh, I don't know where he's at right now. His name is Jordan though. But, um, Ooh. I don't care. <laughs> I'll say his last name too if I want. Oh no, you messy! You messy! I know. I, I'm real messy. <laughs> but um, um, I seen him ten months later to the day. It was November seventh. Uh, um, and uh, I remember I came into stars back when I used to work at Vans. It was probably like 2016 or 2017. And all I could think, and like, I literally just got enraged. And I was like, you're a fucking asshole. Like, because, like, I was, like, I, I knew that you were going through something, too. But I didn't care. We didn't got to be friends no more. We don't got to do nothing like that. But when I hit you up just to see if you're okay for several months, and you couldn't even just send a text saying that I was okay, I figured you were still alive because someone was still paying the, the phone bill because I was able to leave messages. <laughs> But like just the 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 lack of care and the lack of you know just decency in a sense you know just to to just you know let me know it um it really uh it really just showed me how people can really just not you know to yeah like you said dispose of you in, in a sense yeah so it was it was it was a uh, a. Uh, a lesson learned. I feel that I don't know if you can relate to this though. Um, I feel that I I learned the same lessons over and over because I didn't really learn them. Mm. Been there before. Yeah, and it wasn't until again listening to your music, uh, focus because I, I and I'm just like I keep making the same type of friends, but I feel that God has allowed me to make these same type of friends because I'm not learning. Um. So it, it really, uh, it was an eye, eye opener. And I was just like, I can't do this no more. Cause I'd be bending over backwards for people. Um, and I really had to learn how to, to focus on me. So for the people that are out there listening, like, what would you say the best and easiest way to focus on yourself is or, or what are the steps that, that they need to take? Find things that you are into genuinely that you don't mind doing alone. Um, there's a peace in that that is unmatched. Um, like me, I don't mind going hiking by myself. Now, if I go to a party or something, pre-pandemic, um, <laughs> you know, I might hit up one of my friends like, yo, come with me to this function. Or my, one of my friends might hit me up, yo, come with me to this function. I like hanging out with you, but also I don't want to go in here by myself. Yeah. You know, that's different. But there's a lot of things that I do by myself that I don't mind being alone doing, like painting or hiking um, or jogging. 
and just making sure that I'm good, you know? Because if I'm good, I'm gonna be even better for other people. But I gotta be good. So I'm, I've, I've always been able to help my friends out better with an outfit when my outfit is together. Yeah. When my outfit ain't together, I'm like, they showing me something like, what you think about this? I don't know, man, I'm trying to figure, yeah. I'm being dismissive. Yeah. But when my outfit together, Hey, what's up? What's up? what you need? I got some extra shoes. Cause I already got my outfit together. This example was for all the shallow people listening. <laughs> I know you're listening. I just want to say I love you. Shallow as well. That's funny. It's kinda of like the the thing that they tell you when you end on a plane, like if something happens or whatever, you gotta put your mask on before you try to help somebody else put their mask on because how you gonna save somebody else if you you know, how can you, basically? Yeah. So with that, I do have to ask a, a random question. So I just did a podcast uh, two weeks ago um, with one of my uh, closest friends, and um, it was about um, not growing up with a father. Was your father in your life? My dad was in my life. And how how was that uh, growing up with uh, your dad? Like, did that? Do you think that your experiences with your father? shaped or helped you in in certain ways that you think would have been different if he wasn't in your life um i think that um i think i would have been different if he weren't in my life i think so i know so yeah, I, I know so. And then the other my dad is a very um, stern man. And he's a straight shooter. He's straight to the point. And so I get those traits from him. Yeah, there, there's traits that I get from my dad too because I'm like, and I've talked to him all of probably five times in my lifetime. But I'm just like, oh, I got this from you. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, okay. That's cool. Like, you know, it's cool that, you know, when you can see certain things like that, but I'm like, it just shows you how genetics are like without yeah. even being there physically. Like I picked up some, some traits. It's, it's, it's crazy and amazing to, to see how stuff like that works. Um, my, my other question I, I want to ask, I ask everybody these two questions. So if you had 10 minutes with God he was here on this earth, what would be the one question you would ask him? You know that Oprah Winfrey um, interview she did with Maya Angelou? Yes. And Maya said, <laughs> that question made me want to do that just now. Because <laughs> I thought about just the glory of God coming down. And he's like, of everything that's going on in the universe, I'm here just to talk to you. Yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> um, one question I would ask God I would ask God, are there other beings in other universes? Like in other galaxies, like how far does this go? Like, is there like, I, I feel like there are, but can you tell me right quick? I mean, you God, so. Yeah. Like, that's what I would ask God of everything I would ask God that. Yeah, it's crazy. I am um, every t- I ask and people ask me the same question and every time I give a different answer because I really sit there I can think about it and I'm like uh, most of the questions that I would want to ask when the time came time to ask it I'm like that's not even important right now. Like yeah. like like what I was like I wouldn't ask that like so I I really couldn't even give that answer. Um but my other question What would you ask God? Really um I, the one thing that does come to mind is uh, racism. Like, why? Why? What was the purpose of it? Why'd you allow it? Hmm. Because, I mean, if we all could have been treated fine and equally, why Why not? I think that, um, look at me about to uh, defend God. <laughs> <laughs> God does not need me to defend <laughs> God. Um, I think people have free will. This is true. Um, 
And with that free will, some people make bad decisions. And in those bad decisions, even sometimes bad decisions sound good and it's catchy. I think this group of people just caught on to it and it was just a way of life. And then it was taught, you know what I'm saying? Kind of how Hitler worked. Yeah. You know, so um, God is with us, but we also have free will. Have you have you seen the show Lucifer by chance on Netflix? It's on Netflix now. I have not watched it. Okay, so I was super against watching it at first when people told me. And I was like, you know, let me just give it a shot. And it's really not what you think at all. However, I will say that it gives you a different impression of how the devil really works or how he is. Like, it, it, and it basically, the devil acts as if he has daddy issues and God's his dad, of course. And, like, that's the the conflict that he has and why he does what he does. Um, and it's it's really... Like, like you actually kind of start to feel bad for the, de- like the devil in a sense, like, like you, you, you get to see why he does what he does. And like, yeah, he does bad things, but it's not necessarily always for the wrong reasons. So then it's kind of like you, then you ask yourself if I'm doing the wrong thing before the right reason, is it bad or vice versa? If I'm doing the right thing for the wrong reason, is it bad? Um, so it's, but it just gives you a, a just a different uh, you know view on how things could be not saying that i agree with the devil at all just a yeah. disclaimer i'm not saying that at all i'm not you know cuz you know i don't want people bashing me now <laughs> but um it just gives you just a a different picture because i feel that um just growing up no matter what church you go to or wherever you are you always think so negatively and I'm not to say not to look think negatively, but it's like, oh, okay, well, when you look at the show, it's like the devil places things in your path, but you chose that. So it mm. kind of takes the the not the the negativity off of the devil, but more so places it on you. Like you, again, with free will, you have the choice to to do this or that like yeah the devil might have put it in your your way but he didn't make you choose those decisions you chose those decisions on your own yeah um so it kind of gives you that picture um that little portrayal of how the the devil really works so um it's completely different though it's it's basically like a cop show um and i didn't realize i didn't realize that at first like literally he just came he got sent from hell for whatever the reason was and he comes down and he's basically working with the detectives to try to help them solve crimes um but i didn't know that before watching it yeah i think um the 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 show is creative of how they put it together just hearing what you said yes i also saw an advertisement for it on twitter where this new season his brother michael yes is now a part of the show like yeah Yo, this is actually cool. I don't, I probably will like try to watch it now. Yeah, no, it's actually good. I was so against it when it first came out. I didn't watch it. I think this last season is the last season because it got canceled. Um, But I was so against it. And then people kept telling me like, no, it's not what you think. And then I watched it. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, it's light. It's like lighthearted. It's not too serious. It's not, you know, but I know they had so much backlash, but I feel like a lot of things get backlash when we don't really, we judge before we see things. Yeah. I know you're interviewing me. It's not really like an interview. It's a conversation. Yeah. But I want to ask you, why were you against it when it first came out? Cause I just didn't want the whole negativity in. And I that's what I thought. I was judging it before I watched it. I thought it was going to be, you know, negative, just like all of the the churchgoers or whatnot um, painted it to a certain way. And I was just like, OK, this has to do with the devil. I don't even want that negativity in my life because I believe when you watch certain things or listen to certain things, speak certain things, that it can change your energy. And, you know, and I didn't I just didn't want mm-hmm. that. So that's why I was against it. But then I actually watched. And I'm like, oh, this isn't what I thought it was at all. Um, so that's the reason why I didn't uh, didn't initially try to watch it at first. Mm-hmm. OK. And then my other question for you is if you can speak to three people, past, present, future, doesn't matter who they are, whether it be a celebrity, family member, or someone you've never met, and you can have one conversation with the three of them together, who would those three people be? And what would the conversation be? Um, my grandfather, Deacon Bowens. I would love to speak to him just to 
get his perspective on like my he's my great grandfather actually just to get his perspective on like um life and his time and where's he where he's where he came from so i could like get the information and meet my cousin he was um native american and uh, i just want to hear his story on like what my mom and her sisters and my uncles were like when they were like toddlers and stuff like that um i also would like to have a conversation with whitney houston I just always, I just want a hug from Whitney. Just, just hug me. <laughs> <laughs> just tell me everything gonna be all right. Um, and I'm not gonna play your game right. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna pick four because That's fine. I see you do that often. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Never, never going with the rule. Yeah, rebel. Um, <laughs> My third would be um, Michael Jackson. I was going to pick somebody from like a long time ago, but I would have to say Michael Jackson. I just want to, I don't know. I just want to have a picnic with Michael Jackson and like just wear a fly outfit and just, you know, be like, yo, bro, what do you think I should do with my career? Let me should I do this? Like, how did you like it? Um, but then four, I would like to have a conversation with Yana Van Zandt just to be like, yo, is there anything that you see that's wrong with me <laughs> that I need to work on and fix? She don't play. Listen, mom, come here. Can you talk to me and my family? We just, we good. We just want to make sure we good. <laughs> yeah, she don't play. She don't play. I love that yeah. lady. I know a lot of people don't like her. No, I love her too. I love her. Y'all, I love you. You can't even be mad at her because she really just be telling the truth. It, it just be, mm-hmm. I feel that some people, they don't like her delivery. So. And we, but that's Brooklyn though. That's true. You know, a lot of people don't um, like the personality of New Yorkers, but mm-hmm. that's how they talk. Yeah. They, they're going to give you that grit. So. I, I personally like it. I like people to tell me straight up stuff. Don't sugarcoat nothing. Don't yeah. Don't try to protect my feelings, um, because I'm not gonna protect yours. So wow. Yeah, no, straight up. I've made some people. I'm like, that's why I really don't got that many friends. But I'm like, that's not on me. That's on y'all, because wow. um, people say that I'm too. Uh, you're too. Uh, you're too real. I said, what's wrong with that? Yeah. Like, like. I feel that we, uh, in life, we, uh, we're so used to telling people not the truth or sugarcoating certain things about how we feel. And that's why some, like when I hear people say like, Dan, I've been trying to break up with this dude for a while. Like, How how can you try to do something you could succeed in? (laughs) Like you can't try to do something you could succeed in because it wouldn't, wouldn't be trying. Just tell them it's over. Granted, I know that there's some guys that don't take no for an answer, but I mean, there's always a way. Um, but you have no choice but to take no for an answer. Yeah, if somebody says no. Yeah, but, but then you don't. tap into being manipulative and mm-hmm. controlling. So, so true. if that's the case, then you know you have to take the proper precautions. Yeah. Look at me, ready to defend. I'm ready to defend, <laughs> folks. Let me that's tell you what jump in the fight. Me. <laughs> Clearly, well, I want you on my team then. If stuff go down. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just, uh, life, life's a crazy thing. Um, so what would you say is next for you in your career? When's your next? I mean, cause how I, I say this though, because you just dropped music the end of last year. However, comma, um, we live in the day and age is that people want more and more and more. So, um, even though like they'll listen to the project and then they want another project. That's just the... The, the day and age we live in now it's not back like in the 90s where we we could wait for another three to four years or something like that before yeah. you drop a project like they want another project after a couple of weeks so what's next for you with your music any music dropping anything um i'm gonna make everybody wait um because i'm that great um no, I'm, I'm, I'm putting out some music soon y'all please don't please don't stop liking me y'all please send my show um that's how artists that's how artists really be want to talk yes y'all please buddy please y'all please, <laughs> y'all please play my album uh, 
um, when I'm seriously, I'm about to, um, I feel to create again, but this time around, because of the position that I'm in, I have like three different concepts. I don't know if I'm gonna put them all together in one, or if I'm going to break it up into different um, bodies of work. That's awesome, that's awesome. Have you thought of doing a live album? I have. You should. I have I have so many records though, I mm -hmm. don't know which songs to do. To do. So you maybe I'll do two live albums. Yeah, you, I mean, you could always do a poll too, have, have people choose what their favorite I could are. do a poll, but then I'd be caring about those people that don't win. I'd be like, damn. <sighs> oh, well. You didn't win. <laughs> damn. Do you even believe, like, this is so off topic, but you know, like, when you see stuff on Instagram or Twitter, like, oh, um, um, if you guys vote, we're going to pick a random person or whatever, and we're going to give you this money. We're going to get, do you believe in those things? Cause I personally be like, they choose somebody that probably works in the company or something like that. And no one ever gets the money. I think, I think it's, it's real to an extent. It depends on the company, mm -hmm. but you would never know. Y yeah, never. I just, uh, unless you win or you know somebody that won. Yeah. And I never, I never do. You like, know, especially but I, them Tesla a lot of companies. Ones. Oh, go ahead. It's especially those Tesla car, the cars, Tesla, like the ones that they've been giving. Oh, again, we're going to give you, like, I know Sweetie just did one recently um, about giving out a car. And I was like, you know, damn, well, y'all ain't giving out no, just no Tesla for, for just the hell of it. For us just liking certain things. You know what? I, I honestly, I would believe Sweetie because she put hot Cheetos on pizza. <laughs> do you eat, do you eat like that? No. <laughs> I would try it if I had a YouTube um I do have a YouTube channel, but you know if I was like a yeah. YouTuber, I would try it. Um, that's actually one of my dreams. To have a YouTube channel? Yeah. Uh okay, so funny story. Back in like oh nine, I swear I actually need to, after this, I'm taking those videos down because I'll get canceled. <laughs> stuff. No, seriously, because run to go watch yeah. the video. <laughs> Uh, one of them, and I said something on there that was like that. I'm I'm still surprised to this day that I said that because I don't even speak like that. I'm not even gonna say what I said on, there. <laughs> but I said something that's so tasteless. But I thought that I was gonna be this next big you know thing, and I'm like, vote for me on this nigga need a show dot com, and like I had people like going trying to go to the website and stuff. Like I can't find the website. I'm like, oh, I was just you know bullshitting y'all. But like I really thought that I was going to you know, and it was like right at the cusp of when things or like YouTube sensations were actually starting and I could have got on that wave and I had all this footage and my cousin accidentally uh did, I think he did it on purpose but he deleted all of my all the footage that I had that I was about to upload um on purpose you think he did it on purpose yeah there was something on there that he I wasn't I would have never posted it because it would have I would have gotten in trouble too um but um yeah, I wouldn't put it past him. Um, so after that, I was just like, okay, that's not the route I was going to go. And then I had um, a thing to be on the world world. I was going to do that. Um, and I remember going to church and Nisi Nash was there. And she was talking about how when you uh, put on a persona uh, to be on these TV shows and stuff like you got to keep up with that persona for, you know, for how long. And if that ain't who you are, like, is that the person that you want everybody to believe that you are? And I listened to that and I'm like, dang. Because I know that if I was going to go on the world world, I, I already know that I have to act out. I have to be over the top um, just to be, you know, to get endorsements or whatever the case is. And I'm like, that ain't that ain't the person I want to be. So I didn't end up doing mm. the world world. Um I don't regret it, but I do love the real world. Um, I, then, um, I get the... So you would do reality TV? Uh, not anymore. Not anymore? I, it, it depends on what the reality is. Because, I mean, reality TV, like, I, it's scripted. So, to a certain extent. So, mm -hmm. depending on the reality that they're portraying, it depends on if I would do it or not. Mm. So like I would never go on Love and Hip Hop like that's not no because I, I I in my nature I don't fight with people so for me to you know to get on the next season I know that I'm gonna have to cause a ruckus with somebody um, and I will say 
um, one artist that I do know personally that uh, came Michelle, she is not putting on for the cameras. That is who she is every single day. Um, so if I, you know, was that like high spirited or whatever you want to call it all the time, then then that's for me. But I'm I'm a chill dude. Like I, I like to get hype, whatnot. But I I couldn't do reality TV if it had to do with fighting and arguing with people. I like Kay Michelle. Yeah, she's she's real. She's real. And she can sing. I yes. like her music too. Yes. We uh we actually just reconnected recently. We had a, a falling out. Well, she fell out. I was still here. Um, but uh we just got connected again. I'm so happy though for the uh the you know, where like it's really cool when you were cool with somebody, you disconnect and then you see everything that you guys talked about that they're doing. That's always an amazing feeling. Like I'm I'm happy that I was even anywhere a part of that in any aspect for you to get to where you're at, even if it's just a fan or whatever the case is. Like I I'm, I'm proud for people to really Actually, I need to call her and get her on this podcast. But that's another. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> well, tell Kay Michelle I love her and I'm proud of her. I definitely will. Um, so you said that you wanted to be a, you want to have your own YouTube channel. I, I could totally see you. Why, why, why don't you do that? What's stopping you? Um, on some real shit. Can I cuss on your phone? Yeah, yeah, I've been cussing. Okay, well, shit then. <laughs> um, for real, for real, I used to think that I couldn't be funny and I couldn't like do quote unquote regular stuff because I'm an artist, a music artist. And most music artists um, have to be super chill and Rico Suave, you know what I'm saying? And be, you know, be chill for the ladies, you know what I'm saying? And just, you know, yeah. not really talk too much, you know what I'm saying? And that really ain't my personality. I feel it. I be talking shit. I be, you know, talking loud, eating chips. You know, being ghetto sometimes, trying different food with me and my friends. So I just didn't know how that would fit into my career in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, but now I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I say do it. Or if, if even not just the whole YouTube channel, like a documentary type thing, kind of like a, what Beyonce's done, where you can kind of see you creating as well as everything that goes on the outside of that um so people can uh get connected i feel like out of most of the artists that i follow you seem um pretty you if that makes sense like true, yeah. true to yourself like you can kind of tell when people are, are putting on putting on for the camera whether it be not acting themselves or or acting over the top um another artist i feel like that is doja cat i freaking love doja cat i like her personally more than i like her music um because she's just goofy and it, i feel like she doesn't really care about you know and i just found out the other day that 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 was that 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 cow video like oh i'm a cow moon that song that they had I, I just found out that was her and i was like i remember that video i didn't even realize that that was the same like person like so it's it's crazy to see you know people grow in a sense when it comes to their music and everything but yeah i, I definitely all for it i mean i'd watch you so i'm pretty sure everybody else will watch you I would hope so, because if nobody watches, I wouldn't make any money on YouTube. And, um, <laughs> this is true. That, I mean, that's the only thing about what I do and like what you do, too. I try to stay as authentic as possible. I'm like, I'm kind of like a hundred in all areas, but what we do requires people to watch. Yeah. So now we have people in our fields who just do stuff for people to watch. They don't even care about, yeah. you know, what they're putting out to be watched. So uh, I think it's a blessing that people like yourself and me, what we have organically, what we have is organic and it's like watchable. Yes. Well, you know, people can listen to it. Yeah, I feel, I. I had to get back to that. I felt that I, uh, for me personally, I see how things are and how you have to act a certain way. And I'm just like, okay, so I stopped posting. I don't even post pictures. I don't post videos no more because I'm like, okay, this might be out of pocket. I don't want to say that. I have to, I have to fit into this realm of, you know, life coach and stuff. And then I see, um, I forget his name. 
but the one life coach that be telling people how it is. Uh, what's the dude's name? I can't think of his name for the life of me. But just telling people how it is. That when I mean disrespecting them though, like I was. Um, oh, um, what's that man name? Samuels. Yes, with the glasses. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm just like, okay, well, that's not how I would t- like. Grant, I talk to people, but not. I ain't never trying to disrespect nobody. Like that ain't. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, he keeping it real. Like he on one thousand. Uh, I know people like that though. Yeah, because at the end of the day, like I want to keep it real with you, but I ain't ever, I ain't ever in the business of trying to hurt somebody's feelings. Um, but I feel like I, I'm trying to now get back to what I put on there, just being authentic and not being staged, not being any of those things. So I'm getting yeah. back, back to myself, I guess you could say. Yeah. yeah, I think there's, I ask people though, I always say, do you want like my, my, my advice or you want the real deal? Yeah. Cause that's, that's two, two different, different things. things. And a lot of people can't handle the real deal. It's like, no, I think you might want a little sprinkle on the top of the advice that I'm going to give you. So, and sometimes you can't ask people that. You just got to know what they can handle by feeling their, yeah. their spirit or just looking at their aura. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, I had Before I restructured my podcast to create your own story, it was called The Rundown with Terrell Garnett. And um, I was very... Uh, I had like I was talking about pop culture stuff and I think the shit was funny. I made a tasteless joke um about Meg the Stallion. I'm gonna say what I said too, because I thought it was funny. So it was around the time with the allegedly Tory Lane shot her. Um and I'm like, how'd he shoot her in the foot? Was she galloping away? I thought the shit was funny. <laughs> it was a joke. It was a joke. I ended up apologizing afterwards, but it, you know, like it's a joke. Like you know, I'm not a comedian or anything, but somebody could use that on the material. You know, it was a pun. You know, <laughs> but um, that that's just you know how my sense of humor goes. So I'm just like, I can't. I gotta watch what I say. I can't say certain stuff like that. But I'm just like, that's just who I am. So I'm not. I don't want to change who I am to to fit into a a particular box. You know what? Um, one thing, cause I watch a lot of YouTube in my leisure time. And I feel like sometimes when people say stuff, they say it from, well, it's not even sometimes, a lot of times when people say stuff, they say it from outside of the house. But if you were inside of the house, they would never say that. Yeah. Say if me and you are um, like blood brothers, right? And somebody attacked you or something. I'm not going to get online and be like, like, yeah, like, he ain't never take Taekwondo. Like, we grew up taking defense classes. How you get your ass whooped? Like, come on. Yeah. But somebody that doesn't know you, that isn't your brother, would be like, I thought this nigga was like a a champion at some point. How the fuck you get his ass whooped? (laughs) And, And I think that's where we as a coach are trying to figure out what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. Yes, we have freedom of speech, but sometimes your freedom of speech can put you in jail. Yes, definitely. I was um, talking to somebody recently in regards to wrestling, WWE, the attitude error. And I'm just like looking at like documentary of like Stone Cold Steve Austin and stuff. And I'm like the stuff that they would do back then and certain things that they would say, like they would never say that stuff now because I feel as a, as a nation now, I don't want to say that we're more sensitive, um, but I think that we're more aware of certain things that we shouldn't say. I mean, people may look at it as being more sensitive, um, but like I even like Vince McMahon has said the N word on TV before, um, and oh. Vince McMahon he's like the owner of the wrestling WWE, and there's certain stuff like, but that was years ago. But that stuff wouldn't fly now. You know, yeah. but back then we were just like, oh, we, we know he about to get his ass whooped or whatever, you know, just and we laugh it off or whatever. But now we're just like, that ain't cool. So I, I don't know exactly when it happened, where the change came, where we st- stopped letting certain things slide um, or stopped laughing at stuff that really just isn't funny. Um, I don't know when the transition happened, but it happened. Um, and again, we could say that we're we're more sensitive now. Um, I feel that. um different countries or different if you go to Europe certain things 
over there or you can say certain things or you can do certain things that you can't do in America? Yeah. You know, I also think that we're cleaning things up. You know, when you when you clean up a house, there's certain things that um, have to go in the trash. There's no more use for it. And after everything is clean, then you can put all the furniture back where it fits properly. I don't think everything was in the proper spot. Definitely. You know, so some things shouldn't be said anymore because of what it's attached to, because of why it was okay to say it in the first place. Yes. Now, there's only one word that I always say. I, I get where people come from, but it ain't leaving my vocabulary, and that's N-I-G-G-A. Yeah. And so what God do you... Bless. I've had so many... Because um, I, I rarely use the word granted. I have used it before, but as, as I got older, I realized um, more and more the meaning and more, you know, like why we shouldn't use the word. Um what I will say is what, what do you say to people that like, I've had conversations with people of telling them like, don't use the word basically. And I'm like, it, it got me to a place where I was like, I'm not, not that I'm not smart enough. I don't like, but I'm like, I need more facts more knowledge behind why they shouldn't use the word. Have you ever had an experience where you've had to tell people like not to use that word in front of you or, or it ain't cool to use that word in just in general? no, um, I have always kind of been in a, an environment where people knew not. Oh, I need to go to that environment. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't really been in like corporate spaces. And when I did work in corporate America, um, by that point, the sensitivity of life, nobody's going to say that at, at work anyway, but I've never been in like playing basketball outside where someone of a different um race would say it and everybody's like the fuck if they if we was in the, the neighborhood they already knew what was up yeah yeah whether they grew up with us or not so i've always been around people who have respect yeah well then, that's why i don't do well with disrespect and that makes sense that makes total sense um well podcast is about to end right now before i let you go i want to ask the most cliche question that i feel that you guys get asked all the time as musicians but i just want to hear your answer uh how did you uh how did you know that you wanted to be a singer how did you like when when did you know that this is what you wanted to do for a living and second part of that question if you weren't singing what would you be doing right now instead I knew I wanted to be a singer when my aunt was playing this VHS tape of Michael Jackson performing on, on an award show. And he had sprained his ankle or something. And um, I was like, I want to do that. And she was like, do what? I said, what that man doing right there? This is before I even knew his name. I was like, I want to do what that man doing right there. And she was like, well, you gonna do what that man doing then? You, uh, I was like, how I do that? She was like, you'll figure it out. And so uh, that's when I started my quest and like, I wanna do what that man doing. I wanna do what that man doing. So um, what was the second part of your question? And if you weren't doing that, what would you be doing now? If I wasn't an artist full time, I would probably be A teacher. What kind of teacher? Yeah, I like kids. Um, I would probably be like a musical art teacher, um, either music or an art teacher. Uh, I wouldn't want to teach like math and all of that because I don't want to go to school for that. That, that yeah. would bore me. Um, um, me personally. Do you do you do do you sell your paintings at all? You said you painted. I don't. Would you? I don't sell my paintings. Um, I don't, I don't be wanting to, um, I think that's something you gotta be ready for. Cause I, it's so intimate to yeah. me that I don't want to, everything that involves art, I'm just selling it, making music, just selling it, yeah. making art, just selling it, you know, come out, with, uh, make a t-shirt. I'm selling it. Like, damn, can I have something that ain't got nothing to do with selling? But I understand <laughs> it's a brand and everything. Yeah. So I made a place now where I would sell my stuff because it's actually good. 
Okay. Are you multi Are you left handed? Random question. No, right handed. Oh, the reason I ask is I, I find that most left handed people are talented in a lot of different areas. No, I'm one of the right handed people who are just. <laughs> <laughs> I have this like. I'm not arrogant, but I play like me and my friends do that, and it's not now in my system to be like, you know, I'm just so amazing. Yeah. Um, That's good that you got to say, I always tell people never to speak negatively of themselves, even if they're joking. I personally yeah. don't. I never say, like, oh, damn, why'd you do that, Terry? Like, that, that ain't, I don't do stuff like that. Like, you know, only positivity. I definitely don't call myself stupid. I know so many people that do, and I'm like, and I have to cut them off. Like, that's, don't, don't say that. Yeah. Well, I do want to thank you so much. Before I let you go, uh, where can they purchase these tickets again for your show on the 29th? Bet. Y'all can go to my website, samomusic.com, or you can go to my link on Instagram, which is Samo Music, Twitter, Samo Music, TikTok, Samo Music. I'm actually low-key popping a little bit <laughs> on TikTok, and it ain't for singing. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And then that, that's spelled S A M O H T for those of y'all don't, that don't know. Cause you know, people gonna spell it. So people gonna, gonna be out here spelling it wrong. So yeah, the T is silent guys. Yes. And, uh, is that your government or did you, wh where'd you get the name from? Um, that name was given to me by God. Okay. I feel um, that. I was walking and the wind blew and hit me. And I heard some more, and then it was just like, phew. And what does that mean to you? It means twin. It's like the other side of my, my higher self. Uh, always reminded me to be my best self at all, um, at all moments in all areas, as much as I possibly can. And also to give that. So that's the way I serve, by giving my higher self to, to people. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, thank you again for joining me on this podcast. I'm going to send you out with my outro music. And that's all we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed yourself on this episode of Create Your Own Story with Terrell Garnett. We'll catch you next time.